I'm starting out today with an eyeshadow base. I like this one from Essence because it's cheap and cheerful. I primarily use this to neutralise any discoloration on my lids so that I have a nice blank canvas to start out on, but it works great for defining the base of my brows as well. The texture of this base is creamy and on myself it sets to a tacky finish, so I find that if I put eyeshadow straight on top of it, they would apply quite unevenly and appear quite patchy, so I'm just setting the base with my face powder prior to eyeshadow application. I'm starting my liner next and I'm using my dot technique. I have a whole video dedicated to this so I'll leave it below for you to check out if you haven't seen it. I'm using a felt tip pen that's almost wasted to sketch out the shape. This is only a guide so the fact that the product is coming out as a light grey opposed to an opaque black means that if I make a mistake with my outline it can be easily fixed. I'm leaving the outline as is for the moment and moving on to eyeshadow. I'm doing this because if I had have went in with a liquid and then my eyeshadows, the liquid eyeliner would flake away as I'm buffing and blending my shadows. This step isn't really necessary for this look as we are mainly working in the crease. You would really benefit from this step if you're applying eyeshadow to the lid and the crease, but it's just a habit I've gotten into and I do it now without thinking. Also, the fact that I've applied my liner first gives me a starting point for my eyeshadows. I begin from the middle of the flick and then blend inwards. So I started with an eyeshadow that was a few shades darker than my skin tone and now I'm going in with a brown. So as I said, I'm beginning in the middle of the flick and blending into the crease. Once I get to the pupil, I'm lifting the shadow above the crease to just beneath the start of my brow and I'm curving it very subtly. Once I have that dark brown applied, I'm going back in with that skin tone shade to make sure that they fade nicely together. I hadn't planned on a cut crease but I did want to add some definition so I decided to do so with a very light hand. I'm taking some black eyeshadow on a tapered blending brush and I'm sweeping it back and forth at the base of the I suppose new crease line that I've created. So now that I'm finished with the eyeshadows on the lid it's time to fill in the outline of that winged liner that we mapped out earlier. Now, sometimes it doesn't matter how much preparation I put in, I could just be having a bad eyeliner day, which was the case this day. I wasn't happy with the shape of the piece of liner that joined the liner on the upper lash line to the wing, so I soaked the cotton bud in some remover. Then I held it over the space and let the remover get to work on breaking down the product, and then I simply just wiped away. Then you can go back in with your liquid liner and perfect the shape. So after all that I still wasn't happy and I just ended up saying to hell with it and left it. Sometimes it happens. So moving on I'm applying these double lashes from Penny's. I suggest pairing these lashes up with some liner if you want to hide the lash band because it is quite thick. I'm applying that same dark brown eyeshadow now along the lower lash line and stopping at the pupil. I don't want anything too dramatic on the lower lash line, I just want some definition there to balance out the eyes. Next I'm sweeping some brown gel eyeliner on my waterline and then I'm finishing off the eyes with some mascara to bond my own lashes in with the false ones. So we have neutral tones on the eyes and I decided because of that that I'd incorporate a pop of colour on the lips. Firstly, I'm starting out by lining the lips and filling them in to provide a nice base for our lipstick and to help it last a bit longer as well. Now, it probably looks like I've only filled in my bottom lip. I haven't. My top lip is just really small, but I don't bother overdrawing them because I don't think bigger lips suit my face and I kind of like that they're a bit uneven. Now I'm going in with a vibrant pink lipstick from NYX. It's a matte finish so I'm using a small bit because my lips are quite dry. Once I've applied it, I'm blending the colour out with a lip brush. Finally, I'm applying a gloss, again because my lips were quite dry, but also because I like the combination of the products. I think they wear together really well. So that's it. 
I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, don't forget to give me a thumbs up and subscribe to see more. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video.